My name is Wazum to Mishak. Shh. Yes, brother. My name is Wazum to Mishak. So, sir. What's your name? Wazum to Mishak. Please, can you keep quiet? If you want to talk, we'll end the session. I will sit down. Either you talk or I talk. Yes, brother. Your name? My name is Wazum to Mishak. Wazum. Wazum to Wazum. Mishak. So my questions go like this. It has been preached severally that Islam is a religion of peace. Then in the Quran, I found out in Surah 47, verse 4, and I quote. 47, verse 4, what does it say? When you encounter those who disbelieve, strike at their neck. Then when you have rooted them, bind them faith firmly. Then either release them by grace or by ransom. Until war lay down in burdens. Had God will, he could have defeated them himself. But he thus tests some of you by means of others. As for those who are killed in the way of God, he will not let their deed go to waste. So if Islam is a religion of peace, then why will God now ask you to kill a fellow person that because he doesn't believe your religion? Very good question. Brother is quoting... The verse of Surah Muhammad, chapter 47, verse number 4, but out of context. You know, out of context? Out of context. He is quoting, therefore, when he meet the unbelievers in fight, he forgot the word in fight, smite at the neck at length. If you read the earlier verses, it's talking about a war, a war with the unbelievers. And verse number 4 says, in the war, when you meet the unbelievers, you smite at the neck. I'm asking you a question. If a robber enters your house, what will you do? Will you give him a cup of tea? No, but he's not talking about I'm ask, I'm asking you, will you a cup of tea? Suppose the robber comes, tries and rapes your mother, what will you do? I'll fight him. Why? But, yeah, and you're a man of peace? About that. If a robber comes and wants to rape your mother, what will you do? I'll fight him. Then my other question is... No, no. Because I've yes. seen... So allow me to learn now. <laughs> but this is not a robber. This is talking at a... Read one number one. Go from verse number one. Those who reject Allah and hinder in their part. Those who believe and do righteous deed. This because of them reject them. Then they come to war. The enemies of Allah, when they come to war, don't get scared. So I'm asking a question. If, if question? Nigeria has a war with another country, another country, the army general of Nigeria, what will he say? Oh, soldiers, don't get scared. Fight them. He not say, okay, go. When they come, you give your neck at them. What nonsense are you talking? So why I, ask this question? Let is, me complete the answer. Yeah, you are asking the question, now you know you are trapped. Let me complete the answer. Yeah, so this is talking in the battlefield. In the battlefield, when you kill the enemies who come to kill you, this is peace. Okay, what does the police do? The police of Nigeria is supposed to keep peace, correct? How do they carry a gun? Those who want to disrupt the peace, so the rule is, you can use violence as a last resort to maintain peace those who want to disrupt peace. Do you understand? That means you can use violence against those people, against those criminals who want to disrupt peace. This is the golden rule. That's the reason every country has a police, has an army. Just because Nigeria has a police force, that doesn't Nigeria doesn't want peace. It wants peace, therefore it has police. So same way God is telling in the Quran, when the enemies come to attack you, in the battlefield, don't get scared, you strike at the neck. So what is wrong with it? It doesn't mean, because you have to follow the Quran as a whole. Verse number Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 32 says, if anyone kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder, or for spreading corruption in the land, he has killed all of humanity. That's a part of the Quran. Two verses cannot contradict. That means these people have, are spreading corruption in the land. Do you understand? So if you are spreading corruption in the land, that time you can kill them. Do you understand? But killing any, any innocent human being is like killing the whole of humanity. Is there any verse in the Bible which says, if you kill one innocent human being, you have killed the whole of humanity? Is there any verse in the Bible? So which is better for peace, Quran or the Bible? Peace. Which is better? Peace. Quran. The Quran says, if you save any human being, innocent human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though you have saved the whole of humanity. 
Is there any such verse in the Bible? So which is better? At the same time in the battlefield, when the enemies come and disrupt peace, fight them, kill them, no problem. But, sir, Do you understand? Let me say something. Why I ask this question? Is have that? you understood the answer? Yes, I have understood. Now, do you understand that Quran is talking about peace? Okay, sir. Why I ask this question is because last year. No, why you asked? I don't want to know. You asked a question. I don't want to know why you asked. You got the answer, class. Matter is over. I, I want to give you a reference to the question. Sorry? Why it came up. I want to give you a reference. Something you already gave the reference. I already gave the answer. Something happened last year in a university in Sokoto or a polytechnic where a Christian lady was killed as she blasphemed against Muhammad. I can't and hear you. That a Christian lady was killed that she blasphemed against Muhammad. Ah. Yes, sir. You get? So, and I observed that when a Christian and a Muslim are interacting in religious discussion and the Muslim gets provoked, you kill ah. you that you blaspheme. The brother asked the question, there was a Christian lady who did blasphemy. So the rule of the Quran is for a Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 33. Anyone who verges the war against Allah or his Rasul, you either execute them, or you chop off the opposite hands or live, or crucify them, or exile them. There are four options. Anyone who wages the war against Allah and his Rasul, anyone does blasphemy, either execute, either execute, either chop opposite hands and legs, or crucify or exile for option now why they took the option of that you have to ask them so this is the rule of allah in the quran you cannot blaspheme god it's a big sin okay. so this is the rule this is for peace because if you don't do that that lady will do more corruption the full world will be unpeaceful hope that answers the question thank you thank you thank you doctor you can take your seat thank well, you very much thank you